Hi, everybody. Hope everyone's cool. Uh, this might be a long one, but I'll do my best to be constructive. This video is going to be about how Buxby empowers one's journey to being. You could call it self-realization, self-actualization. Um, a friend of mine calls it being self-creative. For me, it's all about being self-empowered. The dilemma that many self-help orientated frameworks present to you is always a bit about uh, focusing on a particular action uh, before changing the world, changing yourself, and then buying a book or something to help you in that journey. It came up with a friend of mine a couple of days ago, and I said to him, look, if people were really interested in wanting you to be your best self, they would collaborate together and come down to a concrete framework for your journey rather than looking at aspects. So um, with one person or some, some people looking at uh, being in the present, others about um, habit forming, aspects that are empowering, um, others discussing how to activate the law of attraction. But in the end, there's always something to buy, a course to buy, just something. And with respect, we're in an economic model that demands that you have to sustain yourself in whatever you choose to love. And that's okay, of course. Uh, even, you know, before you change the world, changing yourself. Sure. But few address the framework to really empower that holistically. And many, um, while they say to respect Earth, uh, don't really give you a way to do it um, in a more collective framework. So... Buxby's about getting to the chase to allow you to follow the giving you a framework to really feel empowered and to not just change things within yourself, but allowing people around you to support them as much as they support you in the things that you really want to do. This has this invites trust. And again, we're still in these frameworks about how to resolve um, not being able to trust people. And you've got currencies that are all based around trying to resolve trustless exchange, which isn't human. We are trusting beings. And the framework that I work with is what do you create to empower the most people in the most sustainable way possible? And any economic model has to allow that to happen, that what you create doesn't need to last, can evolve either with yourself or with other people. And to allow an educational foundation, an education foundation, to to facilitate that without you, your needing to be owned. And, you know, banks own you one way or another. That's why Buxby is free. And it's based on the work of the people. Your choice to use it. And that stabilizes it. And allows people to focus on the quality they want to create in the most sustainable way possible. Another friend of mine said that saying the sustainable thing isn't important because it's an old word or whatever. Just discuss that. How, how does Buxby um, allow you to empower? And that's it. But people will adapt that to thinking that it's all about 
getting the money because that's what we do now. But it's not. And it has nothing to do with money. And even people say it's got nothing to do with money and then the money will come. But the thing is that still this self-focus with, with little connect about how that empowers other people. Great, great intention, but really, if, if money worked, then we wouldn't be in the problem that we're in now. That so many people are forced to do things they don't want to do because of money. Usury currency, as we understand money to be now. Another thing that came up in, this, in the conversations was um, discussing the universe uh, telling you things to do and that there has to be a reason for things to happen. And I certainly don't want to say I'm an authority on this, but I want to run something past you. Think how you would change if you realized that there is no universe in the way that we use it. A lot of people use universe as the substitute for God. But what if there was no universe? And how would that allow you to decide what you do? And instead of thinking that the universe said this or this is what I feel, ask yourself, is a decision that you're making on that framework empowering? We talk about not being attached, but isn't the fact that we decide that there's a universe uh, around us that's um, having these things happen, isn't that a form of attachment by itself? And there's this great um, alleviation of existence when you want to feel that there's a higher power uh, being the decider of whatever happens. And when we're in disempowering frameworks as money, user recurrency, puts us in, believing in a universe, God, religion, whatever you want to call it, um, is a great way of just coming to terms with what we can't control. But people use it as a reason for what they can't control and leave it at that. Ask yourself how many people out there are who pull the strings of economics, of power, are thinking that it's just about changing yourself. There's always a much bigger dream. The, what matters is the framework of what, where that dream goes. Is it something around power or is it something around empowerment? And we need to have frameworks that allow us to explore and create empowerment for ourselves and for other people. One of the things that always gets me about money is, is the evangelist, evangelists that keep asking for money when Jesus was all about <laughs> not money, <laughs> cleansing the temple. Faith has got nothing to do with money. Self-faith has got nothing to do with money. Yes, I know we use it and we have to use it, but we don't have to keep on using it. We can do something different. We can apply models that empower us further on our self-empowerment. It's not about books. It's not about self-help gurus that want to give you a little slice and then 10 years later write another book to answer a bit more. So Self-empowerment is really simple. Always ask, what am I creating today 
what action am I doing today to empower the most people in the most sustainable way possible? That's human nature. Okay, take care, more to come.